I, I watched a talk with Tom Bilyeu. He's a clinical psychologist. It was very fascinating to talk and inspired this Dharma talk. So I just want to give credit where credit is due. He says, love is the opposite of fear. Love will actually neutralize inappropriate fear or excessive fear. Most people think of love as hatred, right? As opposite. But hatred is actually downstream from fear. Hatred is always a byproduct of fear. So when someone is experiencing too much fear or hatred, the prescription is surround it with more love. Neutralize it with greater amounts of love. And that neutralizes fear, right? It changes the pH, their alkaline acid. And they even show up in the body that way. Um, like people with hyperacidity in the muscles and the GI tract, the stomach, the skin. In Ayurveda, they're always experiencing deeply tumultuous emotions whose root is fear, hatred, right? Those with a more alkaline pH experience more easily emotions of love and ease. And a lot of people don't realize that emotions are something else your body has to digest. So you can be doing absolutely everything right for your health, but if you don't deal with your mind, it will destroy all of your efforts. And the yogis are trying to help us accomplish this fearless state, embodying and resonating as unconditional love. It's the path to transcending the material universe. Um, so I wanna just mention what do the yogis consider unconditional love as? How do they define that, right? It's not a type of thing where you feel like you need to control another person, right? It's wanting to see no harm come to somebody else. Um, so we act upon them in thought, action, um, in our words, without causing any harm, without maiming them or killing them. <laughs> it's kind of simple, right? And, and that means it's not we love someone, so we have to, you know, do it by condition. I love you only if, right? That's with condition. I love you only if you wash the dishes. I love you only if you look a certain way. I love you only if you do this thing for me or if you act right or you, right, et cetera, et cetera. What yogis are trying to get us into this really expansive mind state of love without condition, right? A love that rises up from you that is natural and all encompassing and has, um, it just emanates to the other person because of the same part of them that is the same part of you, right? We see the consciousness of the inner being and that is the same consciousness that dwells within ourselves. We're just drops of, um, Ishvara for divinity, right? So when we start to recognize that through the yoga practice in ourselves and in others, we get this fearless state and we develop this love without conditions because conditions are of the material world, which is always changing. You can't really uh, love someone a long time if you're loving it with them based on material conditions, right? It won't work. It's going to change and then you won't love them anymore. So it was never real love. All right, so if you don't have enough love in your life, you have to ask yourself, what are you afraid of? And those tend to be the blocks that have to be conquered in this life, the ones that are holding us back from experiencing the deeper truth of who we are. And those fears are what holds us back from inner fulfillment. So address all the places and ways we are letting fear clog our channels. Are we afraid to fully love our bodies, to fully love ourselves, to fully love the people we accept into our lives? Or are we keeping people around that make it impossible to do that, right? Are we loving our jobs and our work in the world? Or do we keep ourselves stuck in a holding pattern? Right? Are we loving the environment we are existing in? Or are we just settling for where we're at, right? Are we facilitating a life that allows us to experience the love that we are? Or what is it that we fear that is holding us back from manifesting that? So every day we are presented with an incredibly simple choice. Today, will I think, speak, and act from a place of love or a place of fear? That's it. That ongoing examination, bravery, and readjustment is pivotal to success on the spiritual path. So you can take a moment to set your intention. What does all this mean for me? What does it mean in the next hour? What does it mean in the next week, in the next month, in the next year? And as we set Sankalpa or intention in our tradition, we try to trick our subconscious mind by acting and telling and feeling in ourselves like it's already true. So create an intention, a big hairy intention, not based in fear, but based in love, of something you're trying to cultivate as if you already have it. I am yada, yada, yada. I have 
Okay, say it to yourself three times. 